Hello, and in this tutorial we're going to make a ball bounce across um, the screen. Uh, this is going to teach you squash and stretch, which is really important. It's one of the, the key principles of good animation. So let's get started then. If you just follow everything I do um, and do it, uh, then you'll hopefully by the end of this you'll understand some of the key features of using Flash and also how to do some basic animation. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to move over here and we're going to draw a ball. Um, so on the right hand side, where my cursor is, you'll see a sphere, an oval tool. If you can't see an oval tool, um, you probably can see a rectangle tool, that's what it begins as. Just hold your mouse over that left click and choose the oval tool. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my cursor onto this white area here. This white area here is actually the screen. Anything that's off the screen in these grey areas will not be seen. So think of it like a theatre. This is the stage and these are the wings at the side where the actors wait to come on. Okay, so I'm going to draw a circle. Um, to help me draw the circle, I'm going to press the shift key as I draw this and that will make sure that it stays nice and circular and doesn't go like that. Um, throughout any of this, if you want to undo something, just press Ctrl and Z. So, to draw the circle, I put my finger on the shift key, which is the bottom left-hand corner of your keyboard, where you see it says Ctrl. Just above that is an arrow pointing upwards. Put your finger on that and hold it. Press your left mouse key and draw a sphere. And there we go. And I want it about, about that size. We can resize it in a minute. Next thing I want to do is, um, I'm not happy with that. I don't want my, my ball to be black. I want it to be colourful. So I'm going to move my cursor over to the next tool I'm going to show you, and that's this black selection tool. If you want to select something or choose it or move it or pick it around, this is the tool you normally use. So click on that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the ball. And when I click on it, it goes all dotty. Then I'm going to move over to the right-hand side again, and we can see down here we've got two um, little squares of colour. Uh, the one at the bottom is uh, the fill colour, and so I'm going to just click inside there. Box pops up. And I'm going to choose red. There you go. Now let's just click off that. And that's there's my ball. Um, there's a black line around it though. I don't want that. So if you've got a black line around yours, move your cursor and just watch. See on my cursor at the moment, there's a little kind of dotty square just behind it. As I move towards my circle, that little square changes to like a curve. That means I'm over the line. So when I'm over the line, click on it, it gets selected, and then press delete. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to make this uh, look a bit more like a sphere. So to do that, I'm going to make sure my selection tool is selected, which it already is. Click on the sphere, goes all dotty again, and I'm going to move up here to this little palette here. This is a, another little part of the toolbar, a little bit further to the left there. So click on that. And where it's a solid colour, I'm going to just click on that and choose Radial Gradient. And we can see straight away that my ball looks, let's click off it, there we go. Yours may have gone black and white. If it has gone black and white, don't worry. All you need to do is um, click back on the color palette and then down here, you will probably only have two of these and your ball will look something like that to begin with. Um, but it'll be black and white. To change that then, you click on that and this will, this will be the black one on yours. You drag that over to there you drag the white one over to here and then very easily you can just click inside these little um, they look like little houses don't they click inside one of them and you can choose different colors so you could choose a red there if you want you can even choose it from up here and you can also change the color of the white so i'm going to i'm going to do that as well and that will give us hopefully more of a, a severe look to it right i've not actually selected mine then that's why nothing's changed on it so click it it's important to make sure you know what's selected, otherwise nothing changes like that. So I'm going to drag, this will be the black one on yours, drag that over there. Drag the white one over there. And I've got a third little house, you won't have that. To get that, you would basically just move your cursor underneath one of these little houses, that's what I've decided they're called. And you see a little plus appears next to the cursor. If you left click now, it'll make another one. And just by clicking in that and choosing a colour and then dragging it up and down, you can affect the look of your your sphere. Hopefully that's all clear. Right, let's just click off that, click on the screen, and there we can see we've got the ball. I want to make one more little change to that really quickly, and I'm going to do that, but it's clicking on it, 
And I'm going to move over back to our toolbar on the right hand side, but I'm going to choose the tool that is three down, the free transform tool that I've got selected now. I'm going to left click with my mouse and hold on that and a box will pop out and I'm going to choose the gradient transform tool. Click on that. What happens is this little blue bar appears. I can drag that up here and basically just moves that light source. Click off it. Click on my selection tool. There we go. I'm happy with that. One last thing to do. We need to turn this into a symbol and to do that we click on it, right click, go to convert the symbol and uh, a box will pop up, there we go, call it ball I might get it right this time it's always when you're making these videos that things that never normally go wrong go wrong uh, call it ball, make sure the type is movie clip and just set your registration point which is there to the middle yours might be down there, just left click and move it up there, click OK and you are sorted for the first part. Okay, in this second part of the tutorial we're going to draw a path. Paths are really important for animation because they help us plan out exactly how many frames we're going to need and also helps us choose where, well show, not sorry, choose, helps us decide where things are going to go and it saves us a ton of time. Um, before we do any uh, of the path stuff though, I just want to show you um, how we can resize the ball because you'll probably find that yours is either a bit too big at the moment. It's really easy to do. Uh, move your cursor over to the right hand side to the toolbar here. Third tool down. Um, if you followed the first tutorial, you should probably still have selected the gradient transform tool. If you haven't, you'll have the free transform tool and that's what we want. So left click on it, choose free transform tool. Click on the ball and then we can resize it. Put your finger on the shift key. Remember, bottom left hand corner, just above control, it's an arrow pointing upwards. Hold that, left click with your mouse, and then resize the ball. And then move that off the screen. Right, that's good stuff. The next thing we need to do is we need to add in another layer. Because at the moment, if we just draw your attention down here, this is the timeline, and the timeline uh, tells us how many frames there are. So at the moment, we've got one frame, and it goes all the way along, see that, up to 120. And we can even go further than that. Now, the animation that we're working on works at 24 frames per second. So around about here on the timeline is one second. Um, the way that Flash operates is that time travels along in frames this way. And running down this side are all our different layers. Now, we have one layer at the moment. Um, you're going to end up with lots more layers because everything that needs to move has to have its own layer. So this layer, layer 1, is the ball. So we can rename that now so to help us remember where it is. So all we need to do is just move your mouse key over where it says layer 1, double click, and then write ball. Good stuff. Okay, so we've made that layer. Um, we named that layer, sorry. Now we're going to make a new layer because we're going to draw the path on a different layer. Um, so what we're going to do is if we move our cursor down to the bottom left-hand corner to this little piece of paper that with the it looks like the bottom corners folded over click on that and it makes a new layer called layer 2 and we're going to double click on layer 2 the name and change that to path good stuff right what I want to do is I don't want to mess around with the ball layer um, I don't want to move it around and ruin my animation so one of the other cool things that flash can do is if if I just move my cursor over here if we set a little eye that little eye if we were to move down here and click on the little dot in the ball layer, it would it would hide the ball. You see the little cross appears. And if we move a little to the right, see we're below that lock, I can actually lock that layer. So that means I cannot touch the ball layer, which is brilliant. So make sure you're on the path layer and we're going to draw ourselves a path. Uh, I'd like you to draw a path just like mine. Um, to help us make sure that the path is level, we're going to set some rulers up. And it's really easy to do. Let's go up to the top here, click on view, and click choose rulers, and they appear. And then if you just move your cursor up to the top here, where, where the actual measurements are, left click and drag down. Now we can drag down a little ruler. And that's really useful for actually when we start doing the path. We can move that across. Brilliant. That won't be in your actual animation, it's just there to help us. Okay, now I'm going to draw the path. So I move my cursor up to the right hand side. And I'm going to click on this one here, the brush tool. Click on that. Now, before I start brushing, um, 
at the moment the color I've got selected is it's got a radial fill on it let me show you so if I draw that it looks like that and there's no problem with that there's a control in Z to undo but I don't want that um, I want it one nice solid color so I'm just going to choose just choose blue there we go so with blue selected I'm going to start up here and I'm going to draw and this is our ball bouncing it goes all the way down to that line bounces up down again up again notice how it never bounces as high again as it already has and I'll stop there there we go so that is our path now what we're going to do is we're going to mark on the path the keyframes. Keyframes are the most important frames. So your most important frame is where animation starts from. And the next one is where it finishes. So they are our keyframes. Um, we also have other keyframes. If we were actually working on a proper animation, these would be called extremes. But for the purposes of this, let's just call them keyframes. And um, these keyframes, or, or, the ex, or the extremes as they would be known, are the extremes of movement. That's why they get called extremes. But these keyframes, and the, the extremes of movement in this, or position, are here, where the ball hits the floor and it's going to squash. At the top here, where it flies up in the air. Down the bottom here, it hits the floor again. Up here, down here, and up there. So there, they are our are extra keyframes or if we're going to be really correct they're the extremes extreme positions keyframes extremes but we'll just call them keyframes um, right next thing I need to do is I need to mark on all of the in-betweens now in-betweens go between the the main keyframes or the keyframes in the extremes um, so and this is the bit where you've got to think now I'm going to show you what to do on this one uh, because you've not done lots of animation but basically, I'm going to put my first in between there. So the ball will move from there to there. And then I'm going to move it here. And you'll notice there's a, I left a bit of a gap. The reason I've left a gap is because as this ball begins to fall, gravity will take over and begin to drag that ball hurtling towards the earth. Now in animation, if you want something to speed up, you use less frames. So that's why I'm keeping the distance between these growing every time. And I'm going to put the next one here. And then the last one, just before it hits the floor. They'd probably think, I'm mad then, but surely it would have reached higher speeds. And yes, it would, but um, having one just before it hits the floor uh, will make for a better animation. Trust me, you will see when you've done this yourself. Right, as the ball hits the floor, it begins to rise up, and it's fighting against gravity as it goes up. So it's slower, and because it's slower, we can put more frames in, and these frames are going to be about the same distance apart and one there. Right, gets to the top, one straight after and then the gap begins to grow and I'm going to put one just before it's the floor and then as it rises again we put more in. So what I was saying about that the more frames are slower it's just because it takes longer to play through however many are there than it does the few that are there. Right, as it begins to fall again one there, not many on that one, and then might put an extra one in there just to make certain. Eh? One there, and then one at the end. There we go. Right, the next thing I want to do is I want to actually go through and I'm going to count how many of these frames I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me do that again. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, sorry, six, seven. Get your counting right. Um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 at the top. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. This must be fascinating for you listening and hearing me count. 30, 31, 32, 33. And 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. 9, 40, 41. There we go. So now I know we need 41 frames to do this animation. And I'm going to stop the, uh, the video there. And we'll continue this in the next one.